Hello everyone, welcome back to Deviated Observations Anti Timeshare Tuesdays. My name is Chrissy and today we'll be exposing Windham Vacation Resorts, the timeshare company with one of the lowest scores and worst reviews I could find. And in the timeshare industry, being the lowest of the already low is a pretty huge accomplishment. Some of the things I found on Wyndham were truly scandalous and downright angering. The list goes on and on with this company, so I've narrowed it down to the most outrageous things I could find. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. If you watched our first Timeshare Tuesday video, you'll know why I feel timeshares are absolute trash. In most timeshare contracts, the developer has added a clause that they cannot be held accountable for what the sales agent tells you, which leads to an industry rampant with misrepresentation, lies, mentally exhausting, high-pressure sales pitches that can last hours, and just overall sleazy behavior. The timeshare industry can lie to you and not be held accountable. I have no idea how that's even legal. The Wyndham Hotel Corporation was founded by Trammell Crow in Dallas, Texas in 1981 with the company reportedly named after Wyndham Robertson, who was a writer for Fortune magazine and wrote a profile on Crow. Yeah, he didn't name his hotels after, like, his beloved wife or children, no, no. Wyndham was named after the guy who wrote a profile on Trammell Crow. Yeah, kind of strange, but anyways. The company grew over the years through a combination of acquisitions and corporate restructures with the company renamed Wyndham International in 1999. They own several hotel brands such as Super 8, Ramada, Days Inn, Travelodge, and Howard Johnson Hotels, which is really weird considering their hotel chain is actually pretty decent. Headquartered in Orlando, Florida and centered on a points-based system of vacation ownership products, Wyndham Vacation Ownership is considered separate but it's still part of the Wyndham International brand. Wyndham has obtained and developed over 185 timeshare resorts throughout the United States, Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean, and the South Pacific. Last year, Wyndham Destinations brought in over $4 billion in gross revenue. So essentially, Wyndham is just a huge conglomerate of different timeshares and businesses they've acquired. They just buy up everything in their way, and I just quickly have to say, please support your local B&B businesses when you go on vacation and other small independent hotels. Otherwise, every time you give a huge hotel chain money, they buy up more hotels and businesses, and some spoiled, terrible people get even richer. Ew. There are huge amounts of lawsuits and class action lawsuits that claim Wyndham sales policies and practices regarding their timeshares are deceptive. Usually these lawsuits are settled under a confidentiality agreement, but one of the larger lawsuits that was able to actually publish what they settled for was Clark and Rebecca Wixon and others versus Wyndham Resorts. The law firm of Gerard Gibbs of San Francisco, assisted by Hirsch and Helfrich LLP, a Denver, Colorado law firm, won the case, and the company agreed to cancel 22 million vacation credits and paid class counsel up to $5 million in legal fees. Also, here's a bunch of lawsuits and class action lawsuits from a different firm from our last timeshare video. Those are normal run-of-the-mill lawsuits. Wyndham handles on any given day because they are undoubtedly a shady, deceitful company, like all timeshares. So let's start with some of the more interesting court cases that involve Wyndham. So, you learn something new every day, and here's something new I didn't know after researching timeshares for a while. When you buy a timeshare from Wyndham, I had no idea Wyndham requires you to sign your timeshare to a trust. A simple definition for a trust is an arrangement where properties or assets are transferred from the owner to a third party we usually call the trustee. The trustee is paid by the owner and the property or assets are held for the benefit of a second party, usually children, who you want inheriting the property or assets someday. But paying for a trust for a timeshare when most people don't even have their primary home in a trust seems a little ridiculous to me. What's worse is when a company makes you assign your timeshare into a trust you pay for that they own. That sounds like a huge conflict of interest, right? 
and this becomes the basis for the class action lawsuit Carolyn Nolan and Wendy Kelly and others versus Windham Vacation Resorts and Fair Share Vacation Owners Associations, NRCI LLC. The class action lawsuit alleges that every timeshare purchaser is required to assign 100% of their timeshare interest to a company called Fair Share Vacation Owners Association. And here's where things get outrageous. Fair Share Vacation Owners Association is completely controlled by Wyndham. Because the trustee is reportedly controlled by Wyndham, and Wyndham profits from the trust, the trustee, Fair Share Vacation Owners Association, is directly in violation of Arkansas's trust law. So, Arkansas's trust law requires a trustee to administer the trust solely in the interest of the beneficiaries. The Wyndham class action claims that the trust code states the trustees cannot profit from the trust even if they did not breach the trust in profiting from it. During the time period at issue in the Wyndham lawsuit, all three members of the board of directors were Wyndham members and they were able to make changes to the trust even if those changes were not in the best interest of the timeshare holders. So according to timeshare owners, to gain control over the Fair Share Vacation Owners Association and the Fair Share Trust, Windham or its affiliated entities appointed its own executives and employees to control the actions of the trustee. Allegedly, this led to tremendous financial benefits for Windham and affiliates. Wyndham requires timeshare owners to pay fees that cover the cost of administering and operating the trust, which is any amount they decide on, which only financially serves Wyndham, not the timeshare holders. And Wyndham has previously faced claims that the timeshare company misled consumers about its services and unfairly profited from consumers. And that's absolutely disgusting. There are so many ways timeshares exploit people that after a while it gets sickening. The most common ways I've come across is they overcharge for maintenance fees, they try to upsell you on better timeshare packages, and lie that those things will help you sell your current timeshare or help the company buy it back from you. And it's hard to get availability for prime times and last minute vacations. Some timeshare owners have reportedly never been able to use their timeshares more than a handful of times in almost a decade of ownership. One really heartbreaking review that comes to mind from Consumer Affairs is from Nicole of Broadview Heights, Ohio. She wrote on January 15th, 2021, We feel like time and money were stolen from us. We were lied to in order for the Wyndham sales rep to make money. We were lied to by multiple reps, multiple times. We paid every month on a product for eight years, which we estimated to $40,000 plus. We could only use Windham one single time during this period and had to pay other agencies to set up vacations. For all the touting timeshare companies like to spout about saving you money on vacations, poor Nicole has spent $40,000 in 8 years so far to go on one vacation. Imagine the vacations $40,000 could buy you. Timeshares really do try to just suck every last dollar out of you all for a one or two week vacation every year. We'll read a few more of these reviews later on. But one of the biggest victims of timeshare scams are the elderly. Elder fraud seems to be Wyndham's specialty. You may wonder how these salespeople sleep at night, and the truth is most of them are the slime of the earth, but some of them actually do have a conscience. Trish Williams was a former Wyndham timeshare sales representative who was wrongfully terminated for reporting timeshare fraud that targeted the elderly. In 2010, Patricia Williams reported that elderly customers were being defrauded by Wyndham salespeople who lied about maintenance fees and the ability to get rental income from their timeshares. She also reported salespeople who worked for Wyndham were encouraged to open and max out credit cards without the elderly victim's knowledge. She also exposed a common sales tactic that Wyndham employees followed called TAFT, T-T-A-F-T, which stands for Tell Them Any Fucking Thing, where they could say anything as long as they didn't put it in writing. This is regarded as a very common selling tactic in the timeshare selling world. 
So Trish actually worked for Windham and she testified that these were actually things encouraged by the company. That's frankly just outrageous. Trish was represented by Chris Dolan and Ann Costin. Costin stated that this is an epic battle against a well-funded army of lawyers that took us across the United States to obtain evidence and testimony demonstrating the fraud. The jury was deliberate and careful. In no way should this verdict be characterized as anything other than what it is, just compensation of Miss Williams and a penalty of less than one half of one percent of this mammoth corporation's net value. Wyndham had to pay Patricia a whopping $20 million. That's right, $20 million. Thanks for standing up to these monsters, Chris Dolan and Ann Costin. Wherever you are, link to their law firm's website below. Once again, I am not endorsed by any law firm at the time or posting of this video, but these law firms that take on these disgusting timeshare giants deserve a shout out. The last thing I'd like to discuss when it comes to Wyndham is how this huge corporate mammoth is buying legitimacy. As of January 2021, very recently, Wyndham bought Meredith Corporation's well-known travel and leisure magazine for a hundred million dollars in cash. So my issue with corporations like Wyndham buying media is really simple. Say you happen to pick up a magazine on vacation or at a timeshare presentation, and the article happens to cast timeshares in a positive light. Say you're suddenly on vacation, and a timeshare salesman asks you to listen to his presentation in exchange for whatever, let's say a $90 Visa gift card, or free tickets to something you've been wanting to see. You've already got one positive, biased view from a magazine telling you timeshares are a good deal. That makes it more likely for you to buy one. And looking at independent reviews on consumer affairs, I can't tell you how wrong that is. According to the article on Skift, the acquisition is the latest in Windham Destination's ongoing push to expand the reach of its timeshare and vacation clubs into new markets and appeal to younger travelers. Yes, that's right, it's bad enough they lied to grandma and grandpa and left them in the poorhouse and took all their retirement money. But now, they have their sights set on a younger generation of potential suckers they want to bring in to forever pay maintenance fees, again, on a place you stay at for one or two weeks a year on vacation. Let's also talk about other businesses that Wyndham owns that directly benefits them. We know they're not above making you put your timeshare into a trust they have full control over and buying travel magazines that may cast timeshares in a favorable light. But what else does Wyndham have up their sleeve? Let's have a second look at the lawsuit Carolyn Nolan, Wendy Kelly and others versus Wyndham Vacation Resorts and Fair Share Vacation Owners Association, NRCI LLC. The first time I saw the defendants on the lawsuits, I wondered why RCI was getting sued too. RCI is a vacation exchange program, so if you have a timeshare, you can trade your timeshare weeks or points with someone else online who also has a timeshare. They collect annual fees either according to RCI Weeks Affiliated Resort or as an RCI Affiliated Points Resort. Plans start from $89 per year going all the way up to $499 for 5 years. Plus, you can add on other options like point management. Wyndham recommends RCI on their Wyndham Destinations additional travel options page even though RCI happens to have really awful reviews and a low rating on Consumer Affairs website. Then there it was. I was surprised, but kind of not at the same time. Wyndham actually owns RCI, which is funny that it comes right up on Wikipedia. But when you go to RCI's about page and even scroll to the bottom where they usually have a little notice about being owned by another company, I couldn't find a thing. Even Wyndham's site that mentions RCI didn't have a single mention that they were under the same company. It's almost like they don't want you to know RCI is owned by Wyndham because, let's see, could that cause bias if they recommended additional services that made them more money? Uh, yes. Honestly, Wyndham, is there anything you won't try to suck your timeshare buyers dry from every last dollar they own? Oh, and what's laughable is on their Why timeshare page, if you scroll down to the bottom, 
of RCI's Timeshare Love Fest of a web page and look under the heading, does RCI sell timeshares? They reply with no. RCI is an exchange holiday services provider and does not own any properties or resorts. Resort developers can choose to affiliate their resorts to a timeshare exchange network like RCI. We have twice as many affiliated resorts in our exchange program as our nearest competitor. So when thinking of purchasing your timeshare, it's worth asking which exchange company your developer works with and which one you want to become a member of. Okay, technically RCI may not have any properties under their corporate title, but when you are owned by Wyndham, I personally believe stating you don't own any timeshares is misleading when your parent company is getting rich off selling timeshares to chumps. They mention they have twice as many timeshares as their next competitor, and of course that's easy to accomplish when all these Wyndham owners are listing with you because you come recommended. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if Wyndham just eventually bought out the next closest competitor too, because that's what huge corporations like this do. They buy everything and anything they can get their hands on. Also, when I was researching RCI, I came across a webpage from TimeshareConsumerBureau.com. I'm not sure how reliable that webpage is as a source, but they claim that RCI is a complete scam. RCI is accused by this website of taking your money, then giving you the runaround with non-existent customer service. Complaints of rude agents, unanswered calls, and non-existent responsiveness, so pretty much sounds like Wyndham timeshares, so I could believe it. I'm going to end this segment by reading you some of the worst and most heartbreaking reviews I could find on Wyndham, and finish off this segment of anti Timeshare Tuesday with an interesting article one of my viewers sent me. Zane of North Little Rock, Arkansas says, We just recently ended a 10-year association with Wyndham Vacation Resorts. To sum it all up in one word, nightmare. It was the first time in my life I've ever had to hire an attorney. If you make the mistake of attending one of their presentations, usually under the guise of some free or low-cost vacation, you will be subjected to high-pressure sales tactics. They will promise you a 45-minute presentation, but you'll still be there two or three hours later. During that time, you'll be passed around from high pressure to higher pressure if you resist their offer. If you do sign, you've made a deal with the devil. Your monthly maintenance fees, which seemed so reasonable during the sales presentation, will begin to increase almost immediately and they will never stop increasing. The first time and every time thereafter that you stay at a Wyndham Resort, you'll be subjected to more hard sales presentations, even if you request not to. They will bug you to come by your room with a little gift. The gift is a high pressure sales presentation. Just try to get out of a contract with Wyndham and see what hell really is like. There is no one who wants to buy you out of your sucker contract. You can't even give it away. Charities won't touch timeshares with a 20-foot pole. They know better. Wyndham will ruin your credit and or sue you for every penny they're owed. And if it bankrupts you in the process, guess what? You sign the contract and you're going to fulfill it. No mercy. If it's not already too late for you, don't go anywhere near Wyndham. You will regret it. Zane, wherever you are, I hope you find a way to get out of your contract. That's a horrible weight to live under. Sam of Scott, Illinois says, I purchased Windham timeshares over seven years ago and I haven't stopped paying through the nose yet. The sales agents actually bully you and I was even told at one point I was stupid not to purchase more points. This has been my greatest regret in life. I can never get the rooms I want where I want and when I want. If I use RCI, I have to pay additional fees. It's a vicious cycle to rob you of your money. You are better off investing the money and or saving for a vacation every year. I would not recommend this company to anyone. If anyone knows how to get out of these contracts, please let me know. I'm so sorry, Sam. No one deserves that cycle of losing money. Windham and RCI coincidentally have caused you. Karen of Stevensville, Maryland says, My 88-year-old father unfortunately was a victim in this high-pressure Wyndham sales trap. They sold him a $42,000 property, quote-unquote, and a $57,000 property within two months. A lien was put on his house at signing. I know their objective is to make a buck, but sticking it to the elderly is just plain evil. No way to get out of it. All I can say is, shame on you, Wyndham. 
I will never use a property with your name on it again and will discourage everyone who will listen not to as well. Okay, an 88-year-old has no business owning two timeshare properties. There goes almost $100,000 of grandpa's retirement money. And there goes Wyndham and their love for the elderly again. And I had no idea timeshare companies could put a lien on your home. I honestly hope he ended up suing Wyndham. Roger of Knoxville says, While on a vacation in Myrtle Beach, I was approached to attend a Wyndham seminar and receive free tickets to a show. I explained to the lady that I was not interested in purchasing anything, but was told it did not matter. I was told they just wanted the time to explain their program. To make a long story short, they asked for my social security number and other information. Two weeks later, I received a letter stating that a Bill Me Later credit card account had been set up and attempted to bill it $9,000. The letter reported Wyndham as being the origination of the account set up. I called Bill Me Later and reported this was a false charge. At that time, payment had been stopped. I told them I was not interested in a purchase signed a form stating this, and they still proceeded to open a Bill Me Later account. This is an interesting one because you guys remember Patricia Williams, who we mentioned earlier? Remember how she won $20 million for reporting Wyndham for its shady common practices like timeshare sales reps, opening up credit cards without people's permission and charging them, and how Wyndham responded by saying it was an isolated location with an isolated group of people? Yeah, it's not looking like it's so isolated from all these reviews that mentioned Wyndham tried to open accounts in their names all over the US and Canada. Please, never give these people your personal information. The last thing I'm going to read here is an article one of our deviant observers sent me a link to. The LA Times has a column writer named Liz Weston. She's a financial planner who answers questions for readers who write in. The question was, Dear Liz, I'm trying to get rid of my timeshare. Do you have any suggestions for me as a single mom on making any money from this? Even a few grand would be nice. And yes, I've tried both Craigslist and eBay. I paid a whopping $15,000 in 2010, so it's paid for. But annual maintenance fees have just gone up each year. The fees are now over $1,100 a year, and I fear for the future. The developer is willing to take back my timeshare and not charge me the $1,000 they usually do. They act like they're doing me this huge favor, but I'm out $15,000. I was told by their sales rep it was real estate property that would increase in value. I'm just so sick to my stomach over this. Should I just give it back and walk away, or do you have anything you can think of for me to try to get even a small amount of money? To which Liz replies, Timeshares should not be purchased or sold as an investment. The developer may raise the price of newly sold timeshares, but that doesn't mean the one you purchased has any value at all on the resale market. <clears throat> Clearly, the sales rep deceived you, but timeshare contracts typically have a clause that absolves the developer from responsibility for anything sales reps say. Timeshare attorney Michael Finn of Largo, Florida calls that the license to lie clause. Ooh. Your $15,000 is what economists call a sunk cost. You're not going to get the money back. If you continue to try, you may fall victim to another type of scam where con artists convince you that they can sell your timeshare, if only you pay them a hefty upfront fee. You should take the developer up on its offer. Many developers won't take back timeshares even if you pay them. Your other alternative is to try to sell it for a dollar or less on a timeshare owner's site such as Red Week or Timeshare Users Group, but sometimes owners have to offer to pay one or two years worth of maintenance fees just to convince someone else to take the timeshares off their hands. So the first time I read this, um, it honestly made me stick to my stomach. I imagine a really nice lady that just thought she and her kids could enjoy some really nice vacations together. But she's out $15,000, and $15,000 isn't a small amount. If an evil corporation like Wyndham took that much money from me using lies and their usual deceptive practices, I'd probably spend a few sleepless nights. I mean, think of everything you could do with $15,000. 
and it's so awful you can almost hear the regret and pain in this letter to Liz. So this is where we're going to end today. That's about all the heartbreak I can handle. Thanks for joining me. I'll be here every Tuesday trying to spread awareness of this awful industry and their shady, shady tactics. If you have a personal timeshare horror story, please feel free to reach out to Deviated Observations at deviatedobservations at gmail.com. We'd love to feature your timeshare horror story. Sources for all my information are listed below. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Any feedback on sources, sound quality, or content is always appreciated, as we are a brand new channel. Till next time, this is Chrissy with Deviated Observations. Stay safe and stay informed.